Welcome to another episode of The Bible Says This. What say you? My friends, I'm Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr., and I'm excited to talk to you today. It's been a little while. It's been a minute since I've aired some, uh, uh, something or came before you on this medium. But listen, I've been working, I've been preaching, been fighting the devil, and I've been winning. For the God of the Bible always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. The Bible says, as you know, Psalms 33 and verse 4, the first clause says, For the word of the Lord is right. Now, we're in a election season. And a debate will take place just this coming Sunday night, a debate between candidate Donald Trump and candidate Hillary Clinton. And I'm sure you've been keeping up with all the things that are going on. And uh, people have been asking me, well, uh, Pastor Wooden, where, where do you stand? Who are you for? What, what, is your, what are your thoughts on this uh, upcoming presidential election? Well, my thought number one is it's certainly different. Different from anything that we've previously seen, we have for the first time a female at the top of the ticket running for the office of the presidency of the United States. And we also have for the first time, at least in my lifetime, a businessman, a man who heretofore has not organized his life to fit a political resume, but he has given his life to business. And now he's running for the office of the presidency. It has boiled down to them and one of them, my friends, are going to be the president, will be the next president of the United States. Now, I have, as you uh, would assume, something to say. Now, as a result of the Johnson Amendment, as a result of the law as it is currently written and uh, the way things are, I'm not in a position to tell you uh, uh, who to vote for, nor to, to try to persuade you uh, as to whether you should vote for uh, Donald Trump, Donald J. Trump, or Hillary Rodham Clinton. I will say this, though, uh, in, the, in, in full disclosure, uh, I am not a registered Republican, nor am I a registered Democrat. I am a registered non-affiliate. Now, in terms of ideology, I, if, would, would I describe myself uh, a, a, uh, uh, a, a liberal or conservative? I, I am definitely a out-of-the-closet, celebrated, proud, and loud conservative. I believe that conservatism uh, is best. I uh, do not agree with many of the of the doctrines on the on the liberal side, and I most certainly disagree with uh, most of what the progressives uh, stand for. But um, but my friends, I want to talk to you now. I'm not I'm not going to say vote for this person or vote for that person, but I'm going to speak from the standpoint of the scriptures. You know why? I can do that. I have the constitutional right, right to practice my religion. I have the constitutional right of free speech. Now, the Bible says this in uh, Proverbs chapter 3 and in verse 6, in all thy ways acknowledge him and he uh, shall direct thy path. In all thy ways inquire, acknowledge, inquire of the Lord and the Lord will direct your path. An interesting thing here with regards to acknowledging the Lord, the Bible says this in Romans chapter 1, verse 28, even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. And the word retain here literally means they did not like to acknowledge God in their knowledge. It says God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. My friends, the failure to acknowledge God, the failure to include God in every aspect of life is foolishness. It is a, a foolhardy. It is sinful. And it opens you up to believe all kinds of crazy things. So I have a position. I, I have thoughts. I have, a, I have a, an opinion. But my opinion is based on, you got it. 
the word of the Lord. And I'll just, I'll just state some things that are going on and, uh, and, and, and you determine based on your knowledge of scripture, Christians who are watching, where you stand. Every one of us have got to stand before the Lord for ourselves. Every one of us have got to give an account. And uh, uh, I, I, I stick with the scriptures. And, and if the Bible is wrong, then I'm wrong. If the Bible is outdated, outmolded, archaic, passe, past its day, whatever you want to call it, then so am I. If the Bible is old school, guilty as charged. But I believe that the Bible is right. I believe that the Bible is more current than tomorrow morning's newspaper. I believe that the Bible is the word of God. Did you hear the preacher coming out in me? Did you hear how I said, I believe you hear. So calm down, brother Wooden, calm down and let's talk about this. Now, one of the things, as you know, that means a lot to me, as you know, is the issues of uh, life when it comes down to people being born. I got this crazy notion that the very first civil right, the very first one, it's a crazy notion. I'm telling you, it's crazy. Get ready for this one. I believe that the very first civil right is the right to be born. I believe that it all starts with life. I believe that if you don't get a chance to be born, guess what? You can't get Obam Obamacare. You can't get a, a, a option. If, 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 you, if, if, if one person gets elected, they say we're going to repeal and replace it. Well, you can't even get what they replace it with if you don't get born. You can't get free college or you, get, you don't get to pay for college if you don't get born. You follow what I'm saying? If you're not allowed to be born, none of these things apply. And the Bible speaks against shedding innocent blood. And all unborn people are completely innocent. They hadn't, hadn't had a chance to commit any sin whatsoever, according to the book of Romans, uh, chapter, chapter uh, 11. So when you are uh, 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 unborn, you have never committed one sin of any kind. Now, listen. The Hyde Amendment. I want to start by saying this. Over two million lives have been saved. Two million. Two million with an M. Lives have been saved uh, as of the first of many legislative victories for pro-life Americans. The Hyde Amendment has had a very tangible impact on saving the lives of unborn children. According to uh, recent research by Dr. Michael J. New, Ph.D., Associate Scholar at the Charlotte uh, Lozier Institute, I hope I said that right, Multiple studies show that when the Hyde Amendment took effect, the birth rate among women on Medicaid increased by about 13 percent. That means in U.S. states that do not fund abortions through Medicaid, one in every nine, one in every nine people born to a mother on Medicaid owes his or her life to the Hyde Amendment. One in nine. Since 1976, and you, if you've been born, if you were born uh, in 1976 or 1977, 78, it could be, my friends, as you're watching me today, that you owe your life to the Hyde Amendment, especially if you were born and you were born poor. And if you were born poor, born black, born uh, Hispanic, born of color, born poor white. One in nine owes their life to the Hyde Amendment. A total of 2.13 million children nationwide have been saved uh, from, uh, look at this, from abortions because of restrictions to taxpayer funding or under Medicaid. Thank you, Jesus, for the Hyde Amendment. Praise you, Lord, for the Hyde Amendment. One in nine, over two million lives have been saved uh, since 1976, a total of 2.13 million children nationwide have been saved through the Hyde Amendment. To put that number in perspective, New points out, uh, that is Michael J. New, this Ph.D., quote, this is roughly equal to the entire population of Houston and uh, Houston, the fourth largest city in America. It is also roughly equal to the to the population of the entire state of New Mexico. 
and to the combined populations of the states of Rhode Island and Delaware. Today, the Hyde Amendment saves roughly 60,000 unborn children from abortion every year and in turn saves their mothers from the risk, the serious risk of abortion procedures. 60,000 children unborn kids saved a year because of the Hyde Amendment. Look at this, 2 point, uh, 13 million uh, since 1976. All of these people living and breathing, and hey, that may be you. You, you who are watching me, don't, don't, don't you dare turn. You listen to me. The Hyde Amendment may be the reason that you're alive and well today. Well, there is, to be honest with you, only one candidate who is running for the office of the presidency, to be honest now, hey Gary, I want to be honest, there's only one who is running and part of her uh, uh, speech is she wants to repeal. She wants to do away with the Hyde Amendment, which have saved two million lives, 1.1 1 .1 in nine poor people. Born, one in nine on Medicaid, born since 1976, owes its life to the Hyde Amendment. Now, I can't tell you who to vote for. You vote for whomever you want to vote for. But I will say this, that uh, there is, and it's not Donald Trump, there is a, a, a I don't know if I should call the name, but you know, it's, 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 it's what it is. I'm being honest. You vote. Listen, vote for who you want. And if babies being slaughtered, if unborn babies being put to death, unborn poor babies, unborn poor people on Medicaid uh, being put to death, doesn't, doesn't bother you, then uh, vote, 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 vote. Listen to this, though. Uh, uh, abortion activist Hillary Clinton made her first speech at the Democrat presidential as the Democrat presidential nominee to the nation's largest abortion corporation the largest abortion corporation in America, Planned Parenthood. Now, if there's ever been an oxymoronic name, that's one, Planned Parenthood. But then again, you know, I guess they say you want to plan it. So if you're not planned, if it's not planned, if it's by mistake, if it's by the wrong person, if you just really don't feel like having the baby, if it's a oops moment, we'll fix it. This is, this is what Planned Parenthood is all about, my friends. Look at this quote. Here's what she said. I have been proud to stand with Planned Parenthood for a long time, and as president, I will always have your back. Said Hillary, we need to protect Planned Parenthood from partisan attacks. Quote, I will be your partner in the election and uh, for the long haul. Hillary promised the abortion activists uh, as they cheered her on, quote, I want to start by saying something that you don't often, uh, that you don't hear often enough. Here's what she said to Planned Parenthood. Check this out. Are you seated? Are you seated? Here's what she said to Planned Parenthood that I want to say to you that you don't hear often enough. Here's what this, what she said. Thank you. To Planned Parenthood, thank you. The number one killer by far of black people. The number one killer of black people. The number one, Planned Parenthood. The slaughterhouse for African Americans. The slaughterhouse. She says, thank you. That, that's almost as bad as what uh, uh, President Obama said after he closed the speech out to Planned Parenthood. The president of color, the first African American president. You know, if you go along with that. He said to Planned Parenthood, God bless you. Now, if you think saying thank you to an organization that exists to kill kids is fine, then vote that way. If you think that the first civil right is the right to be born, then do that. The Bible says this, what say you?